Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's time for two more two-minute stories. From my bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. So today we are looking at Lost in the Jungle by Rosemary Bromley. And Moving House, also by Rosemary Bromley. Oh, double header. Mm -hmm. Lost in the Jungle. It is not nice to be lost in the jungle, and young Zoe the zebra was lost indeed. I wish I hadn't stopped to play with you, she said to the family of baboons who squatted around her. Well, if you hadn't fallen asleep under that tree, you would have never been left behind, said an old baboon. But I was so hot and tired, and now I'm very thirsty, said Zoe. The baboon scratched his head. I heard the zebras say they were going down to the river to drink, he said. We will go with you part of the way, in case you get lost. Oh, thank you, cried Zoe. And surrounded by chattering baboons, she set off. No sooner had they disappeared through the long grass than a lioness and her three cubs stalked up and settled themselves under the shade of the tree. But unaware of the danger they had been in, Zoe trotted along with her new friends. We shall soon reach the main track down to the drinking place, said the old baboon, and there we must leave you. At that moment, there was a loud trumpeting sound and the ground shook. The baboons became very excited. The elephants are going to the river, they cried. You must go with them. An old elephant, wrinkled and creased, led the herd of great beasts. He lowered his huge head and looked at Zoe and the baboons. Go on, ask him if he will take you with them, whispered the old baboon. Zoe gazed up at the old elephant. I fell asleep, she said timidly, and my family have gone to the drinking place without me. May I go with you to the river, please? The old elephant swished his trunk. Of course you may, he said kindly. You will be safe with us. Come. So Zoe said goodbye to the baboons and trotted away, keeping close to the elephant. Soon the track widened into a meadow, and there lay the river, shining under the hot sun. Gazelles were eating the soft grass by the water, but there were no zebras. Oh dear, cried Zoe, what shall I do? I really am lost. Don't worry, said the old elephant. Hippopotamus sees everyone who comes down to the river. While you have a drink, we will ask him if he has seen your family. As the elephants walked into the shallow water near the river bank, the water swirled and up popped Hippopotamus, his great body shining and his small eyes gleaming with curiosity. Hello, grunted Hippopotamus. Who's that with you? The old elephant swished some water over himself. It's young Zebra. She has lost her family. We thought they might be here. Hippopotamus opened his huge mouth and yawned lazily. Well, they have been here, but they were scared by a tiger and rushed off with the giraffes not long ago. If she hurried, she'd probably catch them up. I see she has made some new friends, said the old elephant, looking across at Zoe. The little zebra was busy telling the gazelles of her troubles. We are just leaving. Why don't you come with us, they said. As the gazelles turned away from the water, Zoe turned with them. Goodbye, trumpeted the elephants. Swiftly, the graceful gazelles and Zoe sped on. Do you think we might catch up with my family before night comes? asked Zoe. Before anyone could answer her, a giraffe raced across the track. He stopped and bent his long neck to look at Zoe. Have you been lost all day? he asked. Yes, I have. I've... Well, your mother is waiting for you through those trees. We've been looking for you everywhere, interrupted the giraffe. Happily, and without another word, the little zebra raced through the trees to her mother. Wow. That's kind of an interesting little story. It feels like it could go on for more. And you can actually see all the animals in the art. Yes, the lioness and her cubs, the baboons, Zoe, the elephants, hippopotamus. Uh, Two giraffes. Yeah, no gazelles. So oh. you're wrong. Uh, I couldn't see the fold here. And there's nothing in there. So that's the one animal they left out. <laughs> but it's very nice art. Nicely detailed. 
nice line work to emphasize where they wanted you to look and give outlines to certain animals that were not getting much contrast, like the hippopotamus on the water. Very nice use of colors. Very jungle-like. Well, it helps so considering it's called Lost in the Jungle. Yeah, I'm just saying it gives you that sense. Very nicely done. Mm -hmm. And even though this is an animal-themed one, I don't really remember it that well. Hmm. And same for the next one, I believe. Which is funny, because there's some in here that are about humans that I remember quite well. But, for now, moving house. Your father is quite right, children. We shall have to move. Mrs. Sparrow settled herself on the house gutter and watched a golden leaf flutter by. Our home at the top of this drain pipe has been very nice, but we need somewhere sheltered and warm now that Autumn is here. Sydney, who had been the first of the Sparrow children to hatch that spring, and was a handsome, dark-feathered young bird, puffed out his chest. Where is father anyway? he chirped. I haven't seen him since breakfast, said his young sister, Sally, fluttering her pale brown feathers. He has gone to the bakery in town to see if there is room for us there, replied Mrs. Sparrow. It would be nice to smell fresh bread every day, and I hear the baker is very generous with crumbs. I don't want to move away, grumbled Sydney. Neither do I, cheeped Sally. I love this house and garden, and I like the family who live here. The children put down bread for us, and the corn they throw out for the white pigeons is absolutely delicious. Yes, shouted Sydney very crossly and loudly. Sally and I won't move, so there. Come on, Sal. And that rude little sparrow flew off into an oak tree. Please don't move away, cried Sally, and giving Mrs. Sparrow a soft peck, she flew after Sydney almost colliding with a house martin on the way. Anyone would think those house martins own the place, said Sydney. They zoom around catching flies all the time and look at all the nests they have. Yes, answered Sally. I heard one of the children say he had counted 40 martins houses stuck to the walls under the eaves. They may be bossy, but they are clever and very handsome. No wonder there's no room for us, grunted Sydney and the two sparrows watched as the martins flashed about the sky with their little forked tails, white chests, and glossy black backs. Thank goodness that lot will soon be gone, said a harsh voice from a branch above the sparrows, and a large jackdaw hopped down beside them. Can't stand the cold, they can't. They'll be off to find the sun any time now, and we'll have the garden to ourselves again. They'll be back next spring, though. Use the same nests year after year. I'll say this for them. They are good builders. Marvelous things, their mud nests. Sally, shouted Sydney. I've got a wonderful idea. Why don't we borrow one of their nests for the winter and give it back to them in the spring? Um, grunted the jackdaw. You'll have to get out pretty quickly when the martins come back, or there will be trouble. But I don't mind keeping a lookout for you. We can move back to the drain pipe in the spring, chirruped Sally. Let's fly and tell Mother. They found Mr. and Mrs. Sparrow looking very gloomy. No room at the bakery. It's full of town sparrows, said Mr. Sparrow. Squeaking with excitement, Sidney and Sally explained their plan. Capital P there. When the Sparrow parents realized that such an important bird as Jackdaw was willing to help them, they happily agreed. The very next week, all the Martins gathered on a telegraph wire early one morning and before lunchtime they had all flown away. Eagerly, the Sparrow family flew round the house, looking for just the right martin's nest to borrow. They found a large one stuck to the wall under the roof of eaves, just like a mud sack with a hole in the top. All through the winter they were warm and snug, and as spring drew near again, they knew that Jackdaw and his nest in the chimney would give them good warning of the returning martins. And another poem. The circus. Roll up and see the circus, cries the man in the shiny hat. Roll up and see the animals and the wonderful way they act. We have lions, we have horses, and a very funny clown who tries to climb up to the roof and then comes tumbling down. Oof. Ow. No illustrations on this poem or the one in the previous episode. Nope. Just different colored background and uh, some framing. This time just at the top and bottom. And, once again, we're back to the single color with the ink. 
work. A very nice job at using... It's not yellow this time, it's an orange. Yeah, it's very different from the other ones, because all the other ones up to this point have really been the yellow-gray version. I think the previous one in the previous episode was also a different color. You mean cowslip keys? Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was yellow. Oh, yeah, you're right. So this is the first one that changed the color up a little bit. It came out quite nice. The birds are very nicely rendered. And the way the color is used to emphasize the patterns of the feathers is really nice as well. And we have all the nests and all the birds. We see one drawing has the render of their old nest in the drain pipe. And then we get another render later of their new nest. The mud dauber, right? Mud what? Dauber? Or was it called something else? Might be thinking of another bird. Or an insect. Yeah. Well, the jackdaw calls it a mud nest. Hmm. But it's a martin's nest. Ah, martin. I was thinking of a mud dauber, I believe, hornet. Yeah. No, martin is the bird. So yeah, that's all very nicely rendered. Like I said, it's like on and off for me, but there are times when I really like this artist. Like this story in the previous story in our previous episode. He or she, because they don't tell us which artist is which. Keep forgetting that. So we don't know if it's Tony Escott or Sally Wellman. So yeah, I don't really remember either of these, which is surprising because there really seems to be a theme in my children's books, especially the books that I've kept. Because this is the Pared Down collection. I can even name off relatively some of the books I've gotten rid of. But a lot of the ones that stayed around seem to be animals or 80s. So, hmm. And this has been two two-minute stories from my bedtime book of two-minute stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories have been Lost in the Jungle and Moving House. Both by Rosemary Bromley. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, yeah, we have a lot of Ember's Reading Rube episodes. We have a lot of episodes just of this book. And we have a lot of episodes overall. There's playlists. Uh, there's stuff on the main channel. You know, pop culture, video games, movies, TV series. Lots of MLB stuff. Finally ready to pick up a copy of this book for yourself? Check the Amazon link. Feel like doing some shopping? I mean, post-holiday deals, right? Check out the Ebates link and get cash back for shopping at stores you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.